and welcome to another episode where we'll be bringing you the very best of Bike Shores UK with me, Steve Berry. Now, throughout the series, we've raced up and down the highways and byways of Britain to the hottest biking events you'll find anywhere in the country. And in tonight's show, we'll be looking back on the thrills and spills of the Thunder Sprint in Northwich and the lumps and bumps of the Red Marley Hill Climb. We'll also be paying tribute to some of the racing legends that we met along the way. First, let's pop along to the You've Been Nabbed rally that I attended back in May. It was an incredible event this year and one that shouldn't be missed by riders who know how to have a good time. Bikes and bikers came in all shapes, sizes and configurations. Yeah, I, I lost uh, lost my right leg above the knee in 1995. So um, it's sort of, obviously it's close to my heart. Normally, uh, normally your rear brake works off your right foot, but this, this one's got a, a brake that's been made, so it now works off the handlebars there. So that, that basically serves as your, as your rear brake now. Um, it's a Grinnell BMW R1150R trike conversion. Um, I've got no use for my right arm, so it's got a left-hand throttle, which raises it on a positive throttle action like a standard throttle. Um, the clutch lever is on the same side as per usual, so I use the throttle and the clutch at the same time. Um, I've got no use of my right hand, so I use this adaption to strap my right hand to the end of the handlebar. Um, some of the switches have been moved around. On BMWs, they have separate indicator switches, one for the left, one for the right. Well, on this, I've retained the left indicator, but the horn switch is now the right-hand indicator, and we've got a separate cancellation switch. There were magnificent bikes on display throughout the weekend. It's called Tritanic and it's, well, I'll let him tell you what it is. What is it? He's a Robin Reliant, but we've obviously a boat on top of it. It's rather unusual. The custom show attracted all kinds of three-wheelers, as you'd expect, ranging from the small, fast and responsive to the absolutely huge, great V8-engined caravan-pulling variety, rather like this one. But of course, there were two wheel machines as well. They range from traditional custom chops like this one to this one, which is an outrageous chopper based on a Lambretta scooter. It's lovely, but why? of the NABD is to get disabled bikers back on the road. Now they do that with lots of practical advice and grants are available, but they also work with bike and trike builders advising them on the needs of disabled bikers. People like Boom Trikes in Bolton, Lancashire, who put together this outrageous trike. We've done some adaptions for the young chap who's bought this, who is paraplegic, which is basically paralyzed from the chest down. So we've had to put certain things on and Anthony's been working on the braking system and um, putting the seat belts on for him. And if we lift up the seat here. And this is the, the engine. Two litre Ford Focus. But it's 130 horsepower. You can also get it in um, a two litre Peugeot, which is 140 horsepower. Uh, this I'll do maybe not to 16, 5.3 seconds and approximately 140 mile an hour. Today is a very special day indeed for Andy. He's been waiting months for this day. He's picking up his new trike the day before the NABD rally with every intention of riding it down there. It weighs 680 kilograms. It costs just short of 30,000 pounds. Turned out he'd hardly been off it since he picked it up 24 hours earlier. But would you believe he got held up in football traffic? I mean, it's not exactly the sort of machine you can filter to the front on, is it? Oh, words can't explain it. Words can't explain it. Uh, it's just been marvellous. Uh, I didn't get off it till half nine last night and drove down to the show this morning. Just the feeling's unbelievable. You've got to try it. <laughs> 
Uh, I wanted to get back onto the road and having the disability, um, it has been hard, hard getting back onto the road, but um, boom, at Bolton have adapted all the vehicle and yeah, I'm here again. Another great day was had at the Thunder Sprint, which was held in Northwich Town Centre. The event started seven years ago, and the idea was to make motorcycle sports accessible to the general public. The Thunder Sprint Festival also plays host to some of the most adored vintage bikes in the history of bike racing. I'm Chris Crimes, and this is a, a BSA Bantam which I've built from scratch over a couple of winters several years ago, uh, just because I just love riding the bike and uh, having built it I thought it'd be good to ride it so I started to go into sprints uh, and the Thunder Sprint was the second sprint that I took part in uh, that's about five six years ago and I've been in every, every one since uh, it's just a fun bike to ride uh, no great shakes on speed but it's just a great a great ride uh, and it's a, a wonderful sprint to take part in It, it's, it's ideal for the short sprints uh, and being nimble and light uh, and it ideally suited to the Thunder Sprint as well uh, and that's you know being a classic a classic bike it, uh, it really is good yeah a little bit of tweaking done to it but it, it, it's as it is it's a Bantam instantly recognizable and it, it's a bike that a lot of people first first rode when they first started biking. It's been a good show and I've won first prize the best of class and first prize for the best of show. Normally I start out about half past nine in the morning, go up to Langollen, the Ponderosa, the coffee, natter with the lads for about an hour and a half and then uh, straight back by Wrexham. Throughout my life on this bike I've done about 170,000 miles. So, Still going strong, get another couple of years on it. Then I've had it for 50 years then. I've never been in a, a sprint. I did paste it a few times when it was new, but now I've slowed down a lot. Hello there, my name's Peter. I'm a member of the Historic Endurance Racing Team. We're actually here today to demonstrate these three machines. Uh, we've actually put them together to demonstrate the endurance racing side of motorcycling. This machine originally began life in a shop in 1969, it was one of the first Honda CB750s to actually come to the UK. It was purchased by Mr. Peter Darville and was campaigned in the 24-hour Bulldog series in 1971, in which it actually came second to Percy Tate on the Works BSA. And it raced from 1969 through to 1972. This particular machine is not an original racing bike. It was actually purchased for £200 as a box of bits over four years ago. It's been extensively rebuilt and you now see it in the form of a Honda CB750R. The engine is an 820 Yoshimura engine. It's got many extras which have been put on to make it useful for racing. This is the original bike that actually the reason why the historic endurance team was formed. This bike was campaigned by Mr Peter Darville who was a great endurance racer. We actually found this in the back of a garage covered in mould. It was filthy dirty and we just recognised it from one small bit. This bike has been put back together. It's still in its original condition as it was in its last race in 1978. And we are here to actually show his life, show the bikes that he used to race, and to actually celebrate what he did. That's it for part one, but don't go away as we've got loads more from the hottest events in the biking calendar from this year gone. See you soon. Welcome back to the very best of Bike Shows UK with me, Steve Berry. We're taking a trip down memory lane and looking back at this year's most happening bike events. So let's catch up with all the shenanigans at this year's Thunder Sprint Festival. The Thunder Sprint isn't just about the heat of competition. One of the less competitive but nonetheless hugely enjoyable parts of the day is the cavalcade, a chance for all sorts of people to ride round the town centre, revving their engines and generally showing off. And best of all, the cavalcade is led by a genuine motorcycling legend, Jim Redman, six times world champion. Well, it's Jim Redman here at the Thunder Sprint for the sixth year in succession, I think. I came to the first one and three sisters and from there we only had 15,000 people, we've built it up till last year we had 50,000 people here and hopefully we'll have 75,000 
um, today, here today. It's a unique event because um, it's a fun day out for everybody and supposed to be a fun day out for the riders. We're parading, um, I think, 250 bikes through the town, which with the police escort, and they're going to do 30 miles an hour because the racing bikes, you can't ride them too slowly. So you can do 30 miles an hour in first gear and that keeps them turning over quite nicely. Bikes today are reliable, they're beautiful, and I think there should be a hell of a lot more promotion into getting people on scooters and bikes as everyday transport. And motorbikes keep you young, you know. I'm, I'm 72 going on 23, you know. And uh, when I get on the bike, the red mist still comes down and you go too quick and you fall off. I fell off in Australia, in Perth in November last year and broke a collarbone. So there's no fool like an old fool, you know. And, uh, but I love it. On our travels, we also had the privilege of meeting racing legends, the guys that kept the golden age of British motorcycling alive, by attending bike shows all across the UK. We were introduced to Frank Perris, a former AJS and Suzuki works rider who was guest of honour at this year's Welsh National Motorcycle Show. And we asked him why 13 is his lucky number. I gave up racing in 1966. I then emigrated to South Africa where Mike Halewood and I had a building company there. But in the start of 1969, I got the, I got, I wanted to go racing again. And, but I decided I would just do half a season in Europe. A friend, Eddie Crooks, who was a big Suzuki dealer, and he had one of these. And I asked him if I could borrow it, and he said, of course you can. When I first picked it up, I looked at the engine number and it was 013 and I thought, oh, I don't like 13. And, uh, and Eddie, Eddie just said to me, well, I'm sorry, Frank, but you stuck with it. And 13 became a very lucky number for me on this machine because it got me third in the World Championship, second in the TT, and uh, I was sort of very, very pleased with it. We also bumped into the great Sammy Miller at the classic motorcycle mechanic show. Sammy Miller was one of the UK's most prolific bike racers. As well as bringing his unique collection of racing Nortons to the Stafford show, Sammy's also hoping to stock up on parts for his huge collection of classic bikes. Every year we come here and uh, I've got my shopping list here as usual, you know. We're rebuilding the Porcupine so I need some rear candlestick rear suspension units for the Porcupine um, because it's a 48 Porcupine we were just rebuilding. First bike to win the World Championship, Les Graham, so that's running and we're now looking for bits. Looking for a rev counter for it too. Anybody got a rev counter? Acetylene lights are always useful too because <laughs> the restoration, often the lights get damaged and broken and when we're restoring bikes for the museum it's nice to have acetylene lights. We've just I managed to get some lights this morning and some gaiters for MP forks because we just restored a little dot and we need some gaiters for that and I managed to get. Um, handlebars, we had some handlebars this morning and levers, clip-on bars for Norton, so big list and um, Villiers crank, glass for an oil meter, got, got to get sort of that sponge for mounting tanks and of course proverbial tools, we're always after tools, little boys love tools and big boys like bigger tools. We spoke to the legendary Len Vale Onslaught, who sadly passed away this year. Len had his first motorcycle ride way back in 1908, and his last one at the age of 102. Len had the passion, the ambition, and the vision to tackle the Red Marley Hill some 75 years ago. I was a bit younger then, 1925, and uh, I had a garage at Hallow which is about five or six miles from here. And I, I, I don't know, I was looking around for things like this. Anything that was unclimbable, I'd got to do it. So I went up the hill. That was the first time. I asked the farmer if I could uh, do it. He says, you'll break your neck. I said, I won't. Well, he said, don't blame me. He said, the hill is unclimbable. I said, he didn't. 
I'll do it. So up I went. I had to go flat out. I got up. The BMF bike event at Peterborough was a magnificent show this year with a record attendance, 91,337 people. And one of the most enjoyable parts of the day was the moped enduro, at least for some. This race has no rules. There's no limit to the amount of people who can enter or how sane those who enter are. Two of the most crazy riders on the track were Mad Mars and David John Fisk of the Old Farts Racing Team. But how and why do they do it? Hi everyone. My name's Marilyn Morley. I'm called Mad Mars in my racing career. Um, this is the third year we've done the moped enduro here in Peterborough. We ride um, a V-Wiz here on the track. We've had it chewed and tweaked to all specifications as far as we can get it to go fast. But a lot depends on the day, how the track's running, whether it's too wet, whether it's too dry, it makes it slippy, whatever, and it makes it just more, all the more fun. This is the third season we've done it, and uh, we're all, well, middle-aged gentlemen. I'm 62, I don't mind admitting it, but uh, I feel 26 when I get out on there, and I just thoroughly enjoy it. I mean, we're all bike lovers. We've gone to a, a bike club in Wisbeach, and uh, I look forward to, to Peterborough. And I'm a bit disappointed when we break the bike, so we've got to repair it rather sharp, you know, but. Uh, that's luck. With a two-stroke, you've got to clutch it a bit when you come to the cane so you can keep the revs up because a two-stroke goes only well when it's revving. And once you get into a power band, you just go. What's spoiling it is the dust. You know, um, I think they want to put a bit more water down on the track to uh, create the dust because once you get in the dust, you've got a job to see. You know, you know, it's a bit choking as well when you're riding around, but that's all fun of the game. One of our riders has hurt his arm. So we've had to replace it with another chap today, but we're all sort of, well, I won't say elderly gentlemen, but uh, you know, we're over 50. And if that wasn't enough madness, let's catch up with amazing Jake Semtex and his motorcycle stunt display show. I'm Jake Semtex and uh, what I'm performing here is the amazing Jumping Jake Semtex motorcycle stunt display show. I've actually been performing now for since 1980, which is a rather long time, so I'm getting a bit old in the tooth. We've got all Honda machinery at the moment, um, main reason being it's the most reliable in, in for what we, what we do. Um, it's very good, the, quads, the quad bikes we're using is the 400cc uh, quad racer. We got the CRF 450 Honda motocross bikes, one of the most powerful you can buy now, so it's, uh, it's all good kit and it's all very durable. We're going to be doing our sort of uh, usual show today with jumps and wheelies and various bits and bobs of daring do. But uh, the few specials we've got on today, we're going to have Sally Semtex, who's going to attempt to jump 10 cars. Uh, if it's not over the course of today, it's going to be tomorrow at this show. We've also got the amazing Flying Ryan. He's going to do his explosion jump. Uh, he actually puts uh, two or three gallons of petrol in a plastic bag and blows the lot up and jumps through it at the same time. It's awesome to see. Well, this is my ramp. Uh, it's a bit different to Jake's ramp. This is the one I use at my shows around the country. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have some pyrotechnics. You see a bit of wire on the edge of the ramp there, and that's going to be used to trigger off me, me pyrotechnics. As I come off the top of the ramp, we're going to have a big explosion, and I'm going to jump through a big ball of fire. If that hasn't exhausted you, let's take a look at all the action from Red Marley Hill Climb this year. Now, going up a big hill on a bike doesn't sound too hard, but once the riders hit full throttle, they are in for a bumpy ride, believe me. First they have to tackle bumpy pedestrian paths and a few other contours in the ground. And then they hit the pimple, the steepest part of the circuit, and quite a few leave the ground. Get to the top of the hill first and you've won your heat. But it's not half as easy as it looks. <laughs> Boy, mind the cameraman. What a splendid chap. It sounds amusing, but the competition is taken very seriously. Two people on fire at this year's event were Tim Mantle and Arthur Browning. 
it was time for Tim and Arthur to go head to head. It was time for the over 350 final. And you know what? You really could cut the tension with a knife. Finally, they were off. From the start, Tim gets pushed over by Phil Edwards looking for the best line up the hill. Arthur nearly loses it on the pedestrian crossing. Tim's all over the place, but Arthur is charging hard, making sure he keeps the traction going. Look at Tim over the pimple. He almost loses it. He almost catches Phil Edwards. It's a photo finish, in fact. And the result? Arthur first, Phil second, Tim third. So, Arthur wins the over 350 class final, but who will win the grand final of the day? This is it, the big race of the day. Arthur gets a cracking start, cuts hard left across Tim to take his preferred line. Tim is on the right, but he's only back in third place now. Up to full speed now, Arthur taking a great line, showing lots of restraint and control, getting some good traction up the hill. So Arthur takes the double and Tim a second place. Come to the end of the show and that means the end of this series of Bike Shows UK. Look out for us again at next year's Bike Shows. I'll see you soon.